What's up, guys? My name is John Mesa. Welcome back to another episode of Honest Tattooer, and I'm joined by my co-host, Matt Triano. Hey, how you doing? And we have some very special guests. We have Kevin Leroy. Yes, I'm here, finally. And we have the good time boys on the couch today. (laughs) And these guys are Bobby Johnson and Brian Black. And for the people that don't know you guys, uh, we always start off just your name, where you're from, uh, what kind of tattoos you do, and how long you've been tattooing. Starting with me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Kevin Leroy from Dallas, Texas. I've been tattooing. Actually, this month makes 18 years. Oh, shit. Wow. Nice, nice, man. It's the month. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> good. That's good. It's a good time. Yeah, it's been crazy. And what kind of work do you do? Oh, yeah. Um, I do realism. I do a lot of black and gray. I do a lot of color. Um, I feel like I'm mostly known for my color realism, though. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Down the line. Uh, I'm Bobby Johnson. What is you? What all the? What is, what's all the information you need from me? <laughs> <laughs> what's your, your name? name where, you're from? where you're from? Social. What kind of tattoos type. you do? And how long you been tattooing? Uh, Bobby Johnson, San Diego. What kind of tattoos I do? Yeah. Mediocre ones. <laughs> uh, Thirteen years. Thirteen years. And Brian Black. Brian Black, Southern California. I tattoo in Fullerton. Um, I'm going to hit my 10 year mark in March. Okay. And then, uh, style of tattoos. I just do black and gray tattoos. Oh, there we go. Oh. On it with the- <laughs> on it today. <laughs> on it today. Well, we're super, super happy to have all you guys here. Um, you know, honest tattooer is like, it's a discussion. All we're going to do is just talk about tattoos. And I think we all love tattooing. Here and like you all have different perspectives on tattooing. And I think like that's why we all get together and once a week have these conversations. Yeah. Uh, before we get into it, because I know we're going to forget with such a huge panel today, I want to thank our Patreon supporters. <laughs> Everybody who supports the Patreon gets an after show. If you'd like to get that, you can go to patreon.com slash honest tattooer. Select the tier that is appropriate for you. Every week, we like to thank somebody new who jumps on board. And this, uh, this week, we are thanking Blake. So thank you, Blake, for supporting. And thank you to everybody else who supports the show. Thank you so much, guys. Like, for real, the Patreons, all the subscribers, every time you guys share our reels and everything, it really just means a lot to us. And especially all the DMs and messages of like, man, I've had a lot of people recently. like Me too. Yeah, just say like, yo, like really enjoying your podcast. Some people don't even watch it. They just listen to it on Spotify and and they're getting something from it and- you know, for something that we started doing just for, you know, just for the love of it and just for the love of tattooing, just to have conversations together. It's, it's been very rewarding because like, you know, when you get together with your friends and you have conversations at uh, your shops after work, you know, those conversations get lost and mm-hmm. forgotten. And uh, it's dope to be able to now be, we're at episode 57? 57, yes. We're at episode 57, you know, like- more than a year worth of episodes of doing this. And, you know, it keeps getting more fun. And and I look forward to it every week to just sit down with a whole new group of, people, of friends, you know, and, yeah. and get to know a little bit more about each other and learn from people. I want to, now that you said that, I want to read the latest one that I just got because it's, it's pretty fucking cool. So this one is by Tattoos by Chandler. And he goes, I just wanted to reach out and say thanks to you and John for making the Honest Tattooer podcast. I have really, really been enjoying it and I feel I've learned a lot from listening. It's been greater to hear all these different perspectives on a variety of topics. I just finished listening to the episode on gatekeeping. The thing that stuck out the most was when you mentioned your art is not good enough. Sure, family and friends will say it's good, but it's not. That made me remember my way I like to describe my art and journey for tattooing. I decided to start taking my art serious so I can get an apprenticeship. All right, he keeps going, going on. But basically at the end of it, he's like, I feel like I had a good grasp on the concepts of how to draw. And now I'm here again, realizing I don't know how to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. Thank you so much, man. That's a that's a nice message. And it's nice that you listen to us because we're just here fucking around. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about gatekeeping. So I, last week I went to, uh, this week I went to uh, Inked Magazine and uh, they're starting to do like, they do the uh, discussion series and they asked me about gatekeeping and what I thought gatekeeping was. So 
I would love to hear everybody's take on this today. What is gatekeeping? Who's going? Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> gatekeeping, yeah, bro. bro. Steam roll. Yeah, what, I mean? <laughs> what is gatekeeping, bro? What is it? What is it? I mean, it's a trending word right now, but what is it? Here's the deal. You may or may not know about me, which is crazy because we've been <laughs> together. We've been we've been friends for over 10 years. I don't know a lot of things, dude. <laughs> 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 it, whenever they're like, describe like on on, on the show, on Ink Master, yeah, they're yeah. like, uh, describe uh, creativity. I'm like, could you Google it? <laughs> and then I'll just like break down the Google version of it. You know what I mean? But I, I mean, I understand the, 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 the concept of gatekeeping. And in tattooing, what, it, what is it to you? What do you think it is? I mean, well, tat in, in, in anything, it's uh, obnoxious. That's what it is. <laughs> Uh, it's like, okay, so the, the, the best way I can do this, I know this is funny, but in anime, right? Not a lot of people know this, but I love anime, right? And some people are like, oh, you don't watch, you don't watch it subtitled. You watch dubbed, like, like they're like too cool or, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like that's kind of gatekeepy on like, I'm not, oh, I'm not cool. I'm not a part of this subculture because I don't watch it a certain way yeah. or design your tattoos a certain way. Right. So like that for me would be gatekeeping or like, uh, or I mean, I, the, the thing is like this, this subject is so perplex. Like it's like, it's like, it's complex. complex, complex. It is complex. Uh, and there's a million different micro gatekeeps in everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Kind of from like using an iPad when you shouldn't be, or like you using uh, a machine and like just gatekeeping. Uh, I guess that's not maybe gatekeeping. That's more of just like a purist thing. Yeah. But uh, I guess what you're probably getting at is is gatekeeping information or gatekeeping uh, a style. Actually, Kev, Kevin and I have talked about this a lot in regards to like you should share your information, right? Should be shared. Kevin's taught me a lot about that. And I feel like that's like. I guess anti gatekeeping, right? Is that how you guys are seeing it? Yeah, we. I mean, we actually just got done talking about about this. I, I personally feel like it's a like a a person or a group of people who I feel like tries to dictate or decide what I guess in terms of tattooing what is acceptable or not acceptable to or, share to share or who is accepted and who is not accepted within the industry. And as we all know, I feel like. Um, a tattooer can Stay look a lot of, to the mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, stay right there. Tattooers can look a lot of different ways. Tattooers can have a lot of different styles, niches, whatever, that they didn't have shit 10 years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like 10 years ago, there there was a a heavy hand on who can come in and who can't, you know? But man, I feel like 10 years ago it still was lenient. Yeah. 10 years ago yeah. it was still lenient. For sure. Yeah. yeah. 10 years is still pretty open. Still, 10 years ago, you could still go buy a DVD about tattooing. You could still order tattooing that's true. stuff yeah, yeah. from like eBay or from like, you know, other supply companies, get it straight and still like, you know, pull off some shit, which is like, if you go further, further back in time. Now like, you can go like the grocery store and get tattoo supplies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you can get tattoo supplies from anywhere. But like, for example, the last episode, we had an apprentice here and he got called a gatekeeper because he said- I think that if you're looking for an apprenticeship, you should probably go and get tattooed at least, you know? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's great advice. Yeah, that's not gatekeeping. Getting tattooed. He got called a gatekeeper for that, bro. Oh, you got to you got to see the comments in that uh, right. Instagram section. It's incredible. On that bro. reel. He got called a gatekeeper for saying, "Yeah, if you want to be a tattoo artist and you like tattoos, hopefully is and people say like and some people's comments were like, "Well, maybe they just want to do it for the art." And and then like, do what? art. Then do art. Then do art. Yeah. Yeah, dude. What? Uh, That's weird. That's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's, it's very unfair, too, to just label him a gatekeeper because he gave his opinion on what you should do. Just get tattooed if you love tattooing so much. But we also know Instagram is like this place where when you watch a video or anything, your first mind is how can I negatively respond to it? You know what I'm saying? I don't think... If we were sitting here in person, no one's going to call you a gatekeeper for saying that you should get tattooed if you want to be a tattooer. Yeah. If you want to be a singer, you should probably know how to sing. Maybe sing. You know what I'm saying? Like, or like music. Or like music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you should like music if yeah. you want to be a singer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
That sounds like some Instagram shit. I, I, I honestly, like, I, I'm trying to figure out anything that you can or want to do that you don't do the thing. Like singing. I want to be a singer. Well, you probably don't not listen to music. Or I want to be a chef. You definitely eat food. Like, there's every single thing. That's the dumbest. Yeah. Honestly, whoever made that is, is, <laughs> sounds dumb. Like, I'm, I'm going to be real. Name well, one thing that you can do that you don't do yourself. You so know what I'm saying? Some, like, some I don't things understand. that they were brought up, you know, they mentioned uh, a few tattooers that are really good tattooers that either have very, very little to no tattoos. Like, I'm, okay. Well, what about them? You know okay, what I'm so saying? I'm personally, well, what about them? I'm okay with a tattooer not having tattoos. What, what annoys me about these comments is it's like he said it. That's that's your opinion. Do you know what I'm saying? Like like a good friend of of Kevin and I's Taylor. She has no tattoos, and I'm so okay with it. She's the homie. Yeah. Like like I'm just upset that they called him a gatekeeper because that's his opinion. And he's just giving advice that I think was good advice. It's pretty it's it's like, great. Hey, you're trying advice. To, advice if yes. you want to become a tattooer, get tattooed. Love it enough to where you buy the product. That's, you believe yeah, in that's it. That's what I felt about. Shit, I, I got some bad ones because I like tattoos yeah, so much. You know what I'm it. saying? Because I was yeah. just like, shit, I just want to get tattooed, man. I like the experience. And one person's comment was great. Like, shouldn't you want to experience where your what your job is going to be like if you decide that career path? Totally. Like, you know, wouldn't you want to visit where you're going to spend most of your day, you know, who, you know, in an environment that you're going to spend more than you're probably your own family with before you right. decide to commit to this career path? Like, you should at least like it. I feel like for, for me too, every time I get tattooed, <clears throat> every time I get tattooed myself, it reminds me how much getting tattooed sucks. And it <laughs> makes me want to elevate the experience even more for my client to be more comfortable because I'm experiencing it. I'm getting reminded, oh, this is a, this is a serious day for getting tattooed. Not only like physically, emotionally, it's uncomfortable. It just reminds me like, oh, this sucks. I, and you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's, and I'm not saying that that's required. I'm just saying for me, it's really good. That's a really good experience for me to have every so often to align my shit. You know I what think I mean? The, the, you nailed the head in the head on like, on like, it's not required to be tattooed to become a tattoo artist. Like there's no like checklist that you need to check off. But I feel like it would probably help. It's just part of the I'm, game. It's it part just, of the love. <laughs> it's just helpful. I'm literally right. here arguing with myself in my head about how I feel about it. Because I'm I, like... I, I, on one hand, I get it. Like when you don't have tattoos as a tattooer, honestly, I didn't know. I didn't know Taylor didn't have any tattoos. She doesn't have one. She doesn't have one. And when I think about no it, I'm way. like, damn, she doesn't have any. But here's the Not other thing. One. Here's the other thing that made me actually like it about Taylor, because you know Taylor as well as I know Taylor. Yeah. She is a fun person to be around. Love she's her. just, she's just a unique human. And De I was talking to Deanna about it. And she said, you know what? I think that now, because it's just been so long that she hasn't had tattoos. I think now that, she's gone so far without having them she just feels unique yeah and that's kind of like where she's found herself she's not necessarily against not getting tattoos she's just not gotten any for so long that now it's kind of her special unique thing well also too taylor's really young and but she's also very in, very young. In, in my head i'm like when i think about myself i even me now i'm not heavily tattooed you know what i'm saying and i remember when i first started getting like big work for me, it was just like, all right, like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, I wouldn't judge anybody for not having tattoos, but at the same time, it is kind of weird. It is, it is, it is, it is weird. You know, just being a tattooer for as long as you've been and you, you're in the environment day in and day out. And it is like, like, ah, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, Going back to the comment right that you were now, saying like, before that someone was saying you should spend time in the environment to see if you want it, if you're going to enjoy actually working in that environment. Yeah. All the people who don't have tattoos, who want to be tattooers, they don't care about being in a shop. They have their private studios or just in like probably their house or whatever. Or just yeah. like they're not concerned about being in the shop environment. That's true. And but but still, even like I think like like if you're going to if you want to be a tattooer and you want to pursue this career, I think you should go spend some time or get tattooed by people that you kind of would admire or look up to, you know, just like if you decide to go to, uh, if you want to be a doctor, you would want to go and visit the college or medical school that you are planning to attend for the next eight years that you're going to be going to fucking school. Like you would go check it out. You wouldn't just like yeah. not go, you know, at all. Like you would just sign up for it without even spending a weekend there to see what it's going to be like, like a little bit. I feel like it's like this. And honestly, I don't, I, I think 
do whatever makes you happy. If you want to have zero tattoos and be a tattooer and you're not hurting anybody, do it. Cool. Mm, sure. But if you're going to wear a bunch of skate brands, tell everyone you skate and don't show up at the skate park maybe once, it's kind of weird. <laughs> are, you, because it's, then it's like, are you a skater? Yeah. Or are you just dressing up as a skater? And then it makes me think, wow. Would, or if they work at a skate shop, why would I buy a skateboard from you? You've never even ridden one. You don't even know yeah, what, kind of what it feels <clears throat> like. Advice. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like, like, like I understand that it's like, there's this community of people that are like, yo, yo, don't gatekeep. I totally get their angle. But the thing is they're, they're, they're weaponizing that for everything. And it's yeah. like, it's like, it's like you, you, you you're not understanding like, it's like you're, from you're, a Princess Bride. You're using this word, but I don't think you know what it means. What's being geeked <laughs> about tattooing? Exactly. Google it. Exactly. Look it up. There are tutorial videos everywhere. Everywhere. They're, it's out there, bro. Yes. <laughs> it just sounds right, like you right. might be gatekeeping and, yourself from um, looking up information or being too lazy. Right, right, right. One of the it's things like, I, I said, I'm sorry to, to cut you off. One of the things I said, I was like, I feel like gatekeeping and tattooing has become like the toxic masculinity where yeah. anything can become oh toxic God. masculinity. No, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Or gaslighting. I feel like there's a lot oh, of words right yeah, now. Yeah, just yeah. Like, They're just trigger words. <laughs> yeah, like you're, yeah, yeah. you're gatekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> now, dude, you're just hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they get so mad. And I'm so, like, so. Honest Tattooer is brought to you by Ink Maps, the ultimate tattoo app for tattooers. Upload your image and instantly read dominant colors and get precise color matches for any tattoo ink brand. You can mix colors, see how they look on your client's skin tone, and even explore value isolation and stencil creation. Compare brands, dive into color properties, and achieve perfect color harmony every time. Import your palettes into Procreate and Photoshop, plus conveniently attach projects to clients for future reference. You can simplify your tattoo process with ink maps. Download now and revolutionize your artistry. Use coupon code Honest Tattooer for 50% off your first year subscription. Introducing the Tattooer Health Club, your secret weapon for longevity in the tattoo industry. If you felt the toll tattooing takes on your body, the pain, tingling, or numbness, you're not alone. Founder Jordan is a tattoo ergonomics and therapy expert with nearly a decade of experience. He's pulling back the curtain on our broken healthcare system to empower you with knowledge. So say goodbye to dismissive doctors and gain the confidence to care for yourself. Join the club, access Jordan's free book and customized warm-up routine. It's for serious tattooers and don't miss the Ergonomic and Therapy Secrets Masterclass. It's time to prioritize your health and set yourself apart in this evolving industry. Get started today at the Tattooer Health Club and let your ink shine. That's right. Use coupon code Honest Tattooers to get 10% off your warm-up routine or your self-paced masterclass. Honest Tattooer is also brought to you by Tattoo Armor, literally the best way to wrap your client at the end of the day. No mess, no adhesives, and they are super comfortable. You can try it for yourself by going to TattooArmorUSA.com. They were able to hook us up with a 20% discount for our followers. Just use the code Honest Tattooer on your next order. You know what? You know what the thing about it is like, I think people like that. It's like when somebody's always in a bad mood, right? I used to be like, I was like, yo, this dude brings me down. Like he makes me feel a type of way. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I, I protect my energy. But really now, whenever I see somebody that's always, always, always in a bad mood, I feel bad for them. And I feel like when you're always accusing people of other stuff, what's going on in your life, bro? Yeah. Are you good? Mm -hmm. I know that I'm, I'm getting a little sidetracked, but I'm talking about these people that use these, like, these, these, um, what would you call them? Like, like these hot yeah. words. Yeah, trigger words. Yeah, yeah. Like, bah, 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 yeah trigger words. And it's like, it, you're, you're also like dissecting something where a kid was like, you should probably go get tattooed. He didn't say, you have to go get tattooed. Again, yes. I don't know. I'm assuming he didn't say you have to go he get tattooed. He didn't say you have to. That no. would then be, okay, maybe that's a little gatekeepy. He but even went said, as far as to say, I'm not saying that you have to be tattooed to the, what was the word, to the gills, but you should yeah. probably have a few. Yeah. And that's yeah. what he says. Like, you should have, have a few. few. Let's try it out. Yeah. yeah. Get a little sampler plate. Absolutely. <laughs> like, you know, like, especially like when you're a tattooer, like uh, what, one of the top questions, is this going to hurt? What does that feel what like? What did you say? I don't know. 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 I don't know.
<laughs> also, also, I feel like you, you again, do, do whatever you want to do. But when you don't have, it's again, I'm, I'll go back to cooking. If you're going to cook a dish and you haven't tasted yeah, the food. Yeah, you're not going to eat it? It's strange. You're like, wait, you didn't even taste it? Nah, it's not for me. <laughs> why do I want Yeah, this? why are you giving it to us? <laughs> why do I want this then? Why, 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 why are you serving it to me if it's not something you would eat? It's yeah. like, well, you asked for it. It's like I a wanted, vegan I that owns to, a barbecue joint, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like to cook. I don't like to eat it. Like, yeah. It's like crazy. Like chefs taste their stuff constantly as they're eating it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's. It's weird. But then it's she should, but then it's people so, shouldn't get, so and I'm like literally directly talking to Taylor, but then she shouldn't feel pressured about having to get tattooed. <laughs> totally. Like, no, you know, she, 100%. Like, no. 100%. Do it on your own time. If you want to do it, do it on your own time. Don't feel pressured because you're this dope tattoo artist and everybody's just shocked that you don't have them. Yeah. Like 100%. that shouldn't be a reason to get a tattoo. 100%. 100%. I'm, I'm just, I'm not even, I'm not even uh, val trying to validate the idea that you should get tattooed. I'm just pointing out facts and validating the dude who said, maybe you should. Yeah, where he's coming yes, from. Not yes, that true. you should. Yes. You I, know what I, I mean? I agree. I agree. Because yeah. he didn't, that's because again, he's not, he's geeky. giving he's advice. Not saying, he's not like absolute on this. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's. I think there's more pros than cons to, to being getting tattooed. Ex absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. But also what we were saying earlier, tattooing is big enough now to where everyone is welcome. Like, her not having tattoos, Taylor, right? Yeah. She's gonna have a clientele that love the fact that she does not have tattoos. So mm -hmm. she's fine. And she's gonna have her corner in tattooing. So when people wanna label you gatekeeping or whatever, it's like, no dude, tattooing is big enough for everyone. So let's stop pointing fingers and just tattoo. Absolutely. I agree with that shit. For real. You know, overall, like, I think like when it comes down to like the, the withholding of information, that's, that to me, it's like the yeah. ultimate gatekeeping. And like, I think like, for example, when I didn't have really any tattoos, I went to a shop here in New York city, that shop doesn't exist anymore, but I didn't really feel welcome. I felt really uncomfortable there. You know what I'm saying? For many reasons, you know, nobody at that, at that shop, this is going to sound crazy. Nobody at the shop looked like me. Nobody like, like walked in, looked around, nobody approached me. You know what I'm saying? Like little things like that. And at the end of the day, I left, I went somewhere else with not as good artists, but they were very welcoming. And some of them did look like me and it made me feel comfortable and it made me want to get tattooed there. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the best tattoos, but it made me love tattooing to want to keep getting tattooed. And it opened up my world, you know, to something to where I am today. You know what I'm saying? Cause like eventually the guy that started tattooing me there was the guy that said, hey, man, you ever thought about tattooing? Because I got tattooed. That's you know? exactly how I got my apprenticeship. Damn, that's cool. You know, and that's how it all worked out. But it's like, I think it's crazy. Like when, you know, when you show up to places, that's like, no matter, like when we're here setting up and people walk into the shop, I'm going to take my time to be welcoming, to take, you know, answer questions. And I just be like, hey, man, I'm setting up for this podcast right now. We ain't got time. Come back tomorrow at one o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Like. Cause that could turn somebody off and be like, ugh, mm -hmm. that's a weird experience. Why would you want to get tattooed by someone who doesn't want to tattoo you? Yeah. Yeah. And who doesn't seem passionate about what they do and about what, you know, and, and I think like the experience is like the hardest, you know, I think like what Bobby said, like the experience of getting tattooed from the moment where you enter the environment. Like, that's why, like, I, it's funny. Cause I had a conversation with Chris about this shit. When I got tattooed, I was like, oh, the music here is really good. And he was like, yeah, I try to keep it this way. Like, but so I know the days that I'm not here, the music gets crazy, you know? <laughs> Cause I feel like sometimes tattooers forget that like, you know, when people walk in, not everybody's into the same kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? So you want to, I'm not saying play pop music, you know what I'm saying? Play some T-Swift like in your shop, all this stuff, what you're room. into, <laughs> but like, you know, create something that can, it's a broader audience of, of appeal to people. Did you catch what I said yesterday when you walked in? Was it yesterday? It was the day that Sophie was here. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going down the, uh, the early 2000s, like post hardcore thing with Sophie, like introducing her to some of the bands I used to listen to. Yeah. So it was a lot of like screamo stuff. And then when you walked in, I was like, ah, Sophie party's over. The boss is in. We got to change the music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, like, like what the fuck is this baby shit? Even going but on? you know what you're touching base on though, is you're touching base on the business aspect of tattooing. Yes. Being welcoming in that side of tattooing. 
which I think there are uh, multi facets to tattooing, and that is one section of it: how you interact with the clientele right when they mo- the moment they walk in. Yeah. Dude, that's a touchy subject in itself too that we've talked about before and people in the comment section were like, fuck that, this what? is my shop and I'm going to play the type of music that I want to listen to. Like, but that's, but that's, that's just it though. Okay. Yeah, it is great. Yeah, fine, keep doing yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. You keep keep doing getting that. your you client, your specific clientele will gravitate towards you. Right. Sick. Yes. That's what I was like, man, like, Paul Booth had a very successful shop that yeah. played music that was like, <sighs> and that's like scary. <laughs> Just scary music with fucking fog on the floor, dude. And the people that went there fucking loved it, dude. It's an experience. It's an experience. Yeah. That's what he's selling. You know? So just provide a provide that experience. Totally. Your clientele will find you. you yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, there's room for everybody. Totally. So why gatekeep? You know, I think like, you know, now there's way more um like, like uh the the conferences with like, you know, educational conferences, like 10 years ago, that would have been like, burn those guys down. Mm. There's a <laughs> for reals. Yeah, that's true. Yo. Yeah, that is true. You know, that would have been crazy. Brick through the window shit. Bro. And you know, and, and even with like the educational conferences, like I'm, st- I'll tell you guys, I don't know how I feel about them. You know, you guys do some of them, you know, wait, why don't you like them? So the reason why I don't necessarily love them is because there's so much information being given and like the, the group, the room, it's a, it's a solid mix of like some experienced people. Skill that, level. Yes. Okay. You know, it's like going into a class that's beyond your skill level yeah. and learning something there or just not learning it, but like somebody's giving you information. You don't necessarily have like the skills to execute that, but because you took the class, yeah. I'm going to go give this a shot. You yeah. know, I mean, well, sometimes that's all it takes. You know what I mean? Is to be able to see it in person. We're all visual learners, yes. you know? And whether or not you're going to grasp as much as someone who's been tattooing for 20 years, you know, is it, you're going to grasp something that you didn't, you're going to leave with something that you didn't have when you yes, came in. Absolutely. I agree something. with that. I, absolutely, I, and I agree with if that. If you leave with something, then it's worth it. Yes. You know I agree what I mean? with that. But, yeah. I, but my thing is just like, man, the that's, so me, the value of doing an apprenticeship, of having an experienced tattooer kind of give you the guidance of like, oh man, you've been crushing these things. You should, they give you that little push of like, hey man, you should go for this a little, make that tattoo bigger, man. I think what do you think for- about those educational seminars having uh, restrictions to them? Like you have to prove that you've been a tattooer that. for so many years before you're allowed in, before you can buy a ticket. Well, mm. I mean, that, so mm. that is literally gatekeeping, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna uh, Let me see your paperwork before you go. Bro. Also, so, so a couple things, because again, Kevin and I have done these, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and and, and, I, and I, I have never, ever been like, I'm going to do a seminar. I've always been asked, right? But I've done quite a few now. And I can tell you a couple of things about them. Number one, not everyone there is going to take the same information that the other person is going to, right? Yes. Especially because they only have X amount of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, people have, I've noticed that people will ask, they will have done my seminars several times and ask me personally, what would you do here? What would you do here? What would you do here? Mm -hmm. You know what? As soon as they leave the room, it's like I've never told them. Like the people, <laughs> people are going to take the information that they want to take regardless. Right. Yeah. And I think that your skill set has a lot to do with how much you take away from that. And number three, I have done s- seminars as well, where it was like, I, I, o- I could only get 10 people. It was the very first one I ever did. And I knew that I, it was going to be a hands-on seminar, right? We mm-hmm. were going to, I, I was going to present to them then I was going to have them watch me tattoo. And then they were going to do the same exact design on fake skin. I did this. I did this. Right. Yeah. And I selected people that I thought were right for that seminar, for mm-hmm. that educate, for that information. Do you yes. know what I'm saying? So, and it's not that I was gatekeeping. I just, I told people, I was like, Hey, there's, it's only a limited amount. And I want to give as much as I can to the people that I can, instead get that of doing a first come first serve basis, I, you know, I, I just thought that like, okay, these 10 people, I feel like they're going to get the very most out of this information. Not that other people wouldn't. Yeah. It's just that those people were just in a sweet spot of their career where I thought that like, 
I don't, I, I, I've never had an apprentice. I've never taught anyone how to tattoo. I felt like I'm still learning how to tattoo. So in those years of tattooing or those, you know, that, that, that experience level of tattooing, I don't know that I have a, a much information to give. So yes, I did. You could label it gatekeep, but, but realistically it was like, yo, these guys are, are going to get the, the best bang for their buck for this. Because if somebody that I that comes to this seminar has been tattooing for one year, they might go, what the fuck am I going to do with this information? I paid yeah. a bunch of money for this. And I'm like, yeah. I'm so sorry, dude. Well, you know what I mean? To answer that question that you're talking about, right? If Matt, when you went to art school, right? Did you have to create a portfolio to get into art school? Absolutely. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. So like, if you want to get to a, and the better the school, the better your portfolio needs to yeah. be to get into that school because there's only so many seats to get like this top tier education for this thing. So like, that's what I'm saying. So like in your case, right. You're like, Oh man, I got 10 seats. I'm going to pick the best 10 students to be able to get this information. You need to have at least this level of knowledge to be able to even like assimilate the kind of shit that I'm trying to teach you. Why does it, what is, why is that gatekeeping where you're literally trying to prevent people from wasting their money on something that they're not even ready to really right, right. get? That's really, that's really what it comes down you know? to. But if you put it that way, you're like, fuck, maybe I am a gatekeeper. You know what I'm saying? You've, you already feel bad. The fact that you're like telling people, you know what, the kind of information that we're going to discuss on this like course or whatever might be beyond, you know, where you're at. Like maybe you, sh you need to bring it down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like it's, it's, it's the same thing with, with, uh, I, I would feel worse if I, they gave me money that didn't, and then they got nothing in return. Right. I'd feel even worse than, sorry, man. I, I just think that this other person is right for this fit in that one single scenario. Right. Yeah. 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 This is like, uh, I say this about, it's, it's, it's similar in a way, but I say this about designs. Right. And it's in, weirdly in my seminars, I'll talk about how, like, if I don't think the design is ready, cause I do a, a lot of large scale work. It's going to, it's going to, they're going to give me thousands. We're not talking bangers. So they give me thousands of dollars to start this crazy big project. Right. And sometimes I'm just not ready. Sometimes the tattoo, it, the design is just not ready. And I, and I, I tell my client like, Hey, this is just not going to happen today. I, I'd feel better if I got a little bit more time to draw this. Uh, and I know you're bummed, but I don't, I don't get anything from this. I actually lose not only drawing time, but a day of tattooing and no money, whatever else. But the thing is, when it comes down to it is I would rather you be upset with me today then upset with me for the rest of your life because I didn't put everything I had into this tattoo. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't yeah. want, I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I, I don't know how my brain, my, I got a dumb ADHD brain. I don't know how I drew the bridge between what we were talking about to that, but like, <laughs> well, I guess wasting people's money and wanting to give them the value that they're worth and what their money is worth. I guess that's what, what bridge I'm trying to cross. Okay. You know what I mean? No, yeah. that makes sense though. That's called being a good tattooer. Like thinking of, the, the overall end process and not trying to satisfy them that very moment. See, I don't know. I'm like in my head. I, I mean, I completely agree with everything all of y'all said, but then I think about myself, let's say when I first started tattooing and I think about like, first of all, if a seminar by a tattooer that I really admired was available to me, in my mind, whether or not I can actually execute this on skin just yet, I know I, I know I have the the artistic background to eventually get there. And for a lot of people, they can't get apprenticeships. They can't do this. This is their opportunity to sit in front of someone who, like I said, they admire. Who even if it's just like, okay, this is the inks that you use. This is the machine that you use. This is this is what you're, this is what I need to have in order to get to that place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, again, um, it's just being able to visually see it is different. You know what I'm saying? Because again, like you're not stopping anybody from tattooing, whether no, or not you accept their inquiry or not, they're going to figure out a way to, to do it. And it's just like, in my mind, I just think about myself back then. If, if I had someone who was just like, you know what? Come sit in. You can, you, you, you want to, you're obviously investing in this. You obviously want something out of it. You know, whatever is going to be, um, absorbed depending on who, who's like, again, 10 people could be in there and 10 people could absorb 10 different things. And I just feel like 
who am I to deny any one of them what they need to absorb? You know what I'm saying? It's just like you invested in this. Like, obviously you want it. It's not like I'm just giving away for free. You know, this is your hard earned money. This is your time. Same way it's mine. Like, I'm going to give you as much as I possibly can. And I'll tell you who you are to deny somebody. You're the person that's teaching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, you know, just like I was saying, like if you, if in order to get into a good school, you have to prove that you can get into that school. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's why you make that choice. I'm not saying you, so you can make that decision of like, Hey, I'm taking 10 people, but I want 10 people that are going to be able to take the most out of what I have to teach. Because like, for example, you know, if somebody comes to your your course and you're teaching some like really advanced techniques about color realism, but they still can't handle like the most basic like color theory that they should learn that before they get to that next well, yeah. level. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, if you're still trying to explain to somebody like what complementary colors are and they're trying to take some advanced realism techniques, then. So I guess it would be case by case. Cause yes, if you're talking about a color portrait seminar versus a symposium, I'm like, the symposium for sure. I'm like, there's a wide, there are apprentices there. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But at the same time, I'm not going to like vet every person that wants to sign up just to come and hear what tattooers want to talk about. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's different levels. We're giving valuable information, sure. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, agree. I feel like there's different levels. And I think like overall, like uh, that, that would do better. That would be better overall, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, but that's I, just my opinion. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, personally have any room to gatekeep anything because I had an apprenticeship, quit it, had a kid, had a seven year gap. And I mean, I, I always tell people as cheesy as it sounds, I just looked at tattoo magazines and studied the fuck out of them and drew a lot. And then I, again, even as even cheesier, I watched like Miami Inc. And they would show like three seconds of tattooing. I watched Chris Garver and all those dudes tattoo for like three seconds. Corey Miller on LA Inc. I would just, okay, he's floating the needle a little bit. And I would just like study, right? And then I lied to get into the next shop and told them I'd been tattooing three years. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, I don't I really have a ton of room to be like, no, nah, this is like sacred. Cause like I kind of weaseled my way in, you know what I mean? Like it's, that's just the truth. Like I, I did, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now I'm sitting here with you guys. Sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> on, on the same way though. Cause yeah. I, I, I started tattooing in 2006 and I bought an eBay kit, try to figure out how to put the machine together. had no idea what was going on. Finally got it running halfway. I tattooed a couple of my friends and after like five or six tattoos, I felt really bad. I was like, Oh shit, man, I'm fucking up all my friends. And actually one of the girls stopped talking to me because of it. Yeah. And so <laughs> oh, I put the machines shit. down, but the, like the five pictures of tattoos that I did, I then brought to a guy who was opening up a new tattoo shop in town. And I was like, hey man, I'm a tattooer. Here's my portfolio. And that's how I got my job. Snick my way right in there too. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. He, but to his credit, he was like, no, you're not. You're not a tattooer. But he gave me an apprenticeship. So I, I gave you a chance. Give me a chance. That's right. He's like, you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I think there's there's value there. Like, you know, after I started tattooing at the shop that I mentioned before, you know, like I worked there for maybe about a year and a half. And then uh and then uh, at that point, like I realized more that I'm like, there's no more that I can learn from this group of people. And that was like, I need to go somewhere else. And like the tattoos that I had at that point on my portfolio were like, just like kanjis, like some tribals, some, a couple of praying hands, like the most, the things that I had learned to do at that shop, there was nothing more, but you know, some of the things weren't super clean, but there was enough there that I went somewhere and they were like, yeah, it's fine. You can get a job. And then I was there asking questions like crazy because everybody at that shop, you know, I'd been tattooing for a long time and I only had like a year and a half in, you know? Yeah. And some people were like, it was one of those, that's when I got my my first like sense of like, oh, like information is earned, not given. See, and that's a, I feel like I'm jaded. I feel like I'm like, <laughs> I'm jaded as fuck because in two, I started in 2006 also and 2006 in Texas, it was hard for someone that looked like me to get an apprenticeship. I went to every single shop there was. Yeah, all of them said no. I had, I had portfolios and everything. I'm just trying to get an apprenticeship. Went to every single shop. All of them said no. To the point, that's why I said, I'm like, you're not going to stop anywhere from tattooing because I, I I wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? It was like the same thing. Like, I, 
I got my my machine and shit, and I started fucking <laughs> fucking my friends up to the point where it was just like, all right, like I'm I'm gonna figure this out. And it's it's I took a long time trying to figure it out, you know, maybe like fucking like five, six, seven years, you know what I'm saying? And then it got to a point where I was actually here. I was actually living here by that time. And eventually a shop reached out and was just like, hey, um, we're hiring right now if you're interested. And, you know, like I think about like that moment where it was like, finally, OK, finally, I'm accepted into this industry, you know, where it's just like there was so much time wasted. I feel like trying to trying to just figure it out. You know what yeah, I mean? And, and sure. And I mean, as we know, like there's a lot of industries where it's 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 difficult to get in, you know. Um, and for me, like I said, like when I just see a lot of young tattooers right now, like a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, I see myself in, you know, yeah. so it's just like I'm a helper by nature. So it's just like if I can assist and this is from top to bottom, if I if I know that, like. I can help out in any kind of way. I'm I'm gonna do it, and I think that's why it's just like the gatekeep thing is like a trigger for me. It's like it's triggering. Like what the what what are you who are you trying to who are you, why what are, yeah. like what are you getting out of it? You know what I'm saying? Like I understand, but I'm like in my mind is like normalize normalize t- this shit. Normalize tattoos. I feel like there's more people getting tattoos today than there ever were. Yeah, you know what I mean. Therefore, it will yield a wider range of tattooers. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, there's, there's also more tattooers today. Yeah. But it's just like, dog, if, if you're good, you're good. I mean, I feel like everybody, everybody will be weeded out. If you're not a, a serious artist, if you're not a serious tattooer, you will weed yourself out. This is not an industry that just, you just get it just because you want, you know, just because just it's just like you, it. you think you you can do it. It's just like, no, it takes a lot of time and not every good artist is a good tattooer. We know that. It's just like people, people weed themselves out. I just, in my mind, I'm like, I, I, I just, I don't know. It's like, when people say that they want the opportunity and people actually invest and show me that they're, that they're serious about it enough, I'm like, all right, until I, uh, you know, wh- whether it's an apprenticeship or whatever, it's just like, I'll tell my apprentices in a minute, like, I will fire you literally at any point. If I feel like you're not serious about it anymore, like, I'll, I will fire you. But at the same time, if I feel like you really are passionate about getting the job or whatever the case may be or coming to the seminar, I'm like, all right, like, I'll let you know, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. It's... It keeps you, a trigger for you me. just brought up so many things that I want to touch on, but most recently, the thing you said about firing an apprentice, I told you about this the other day. I want to get everybody's opinion on this. So I got a message, this guy, he is, or he was, maybe he still is somewhere else. He was a tattoo apprentice, just got an apprenticeship. Before he landed his apprenticeship, he had an appointment with an artist at a different shop to get tattooed. So now he starts his apprenticeship, a couple of days later into his apprenticeship, he goes and gets tattooed by another artist comes back to the shop where he's apprenticing at now. And the owner of the shop's like, you got tattooed somewhere else? Pack of shit, get out of here. You're done. So now he emails me. He's like, dude, is this normal? Is this right? Like, did I overstep my boundaries? You know what that is? Ego. Insecure. He's insecure. Insecure, bro. (laughs) Okay, bro. I couldn't believe that, bro. I was like, get out of here, dude. A lot of this shit is built off of ego. I'm going to let you know. A lot of this shit is built off of ego. But yeah, I hate that. (laughs) Yeah. I felt bad yeah, for that guy. Yeah. I was like, that's fucked like, you up. You did something man. wrong. Like, no, you didn't do anything wrong. That's like the biggest projection of all time. But too. you know what, though? That's a good thing because he doesn't belong there. He don't He's belong gonna there. That's the wrong shit. Like, he dodged a hundred percent. Who wants to be around that, yeah, right? Fuck that. I, you know what's funny? You, I, I want to touch on this. Uh, there, my number one thing, well, the number one reason that I don't want an apprentice is, number one, I don't think that I'm qualified to teach anyone how to tattoo at least yet. Right. Number two, I know I've always been obsessed with getting as good as I possibly can. And as soon as I'm around someone who doesn't seem that way, I am like, I, I don't want to have anything to do with this. I I don't, it's like when somebody asks me for advice and then I'm like, why you're not going to use it. (laughs) Like you're, you're not going to use it. I, I, I have no, you can, you can be whatever tattooer you want to be. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is I don't want to teach you anything if you don't actually want to learn anything. Do you know what I mean? Like Let me ask you question. Question. Obsession, yeah. they have to have the, the same level of obsession with me. Otherwise, I just find myself disappointed. And it's honestly not fair to them. And it's not fair to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ever draw your kids? Do they ask uh, you all the show? time? All the time. How, do you have the same feeling there? 
No, because I don't, my, my son isn't trying to be a professional yeah. uh, artist. You know what I'm saying? He's just doing it for fun. I catch myself sometimes like trying to show Sammy how to draw something. And he's just like, ah, oh, whatever, man. And like part of me is like, no, you gotta do it this way. And I'm like, all right, just let, him let it go. Yeah. 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 Let him enjoy it. Actually, <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny you say that because I'm actually the other way around where when I'm drawing with my son, I find him frustrated because he compares himself to me and he's bummed that it's not as good as he wants it to be. Yeah, right. I mean, that and I tell him, dude, art can be whatever you want. Just draw whatever you want, because especially, especially because he's so young and the fact that I struggle with myself, I, I kind of put myself in a box and I'm like, it's not, it's not exactly how I want it to be. You touched on this actually, I think on a, on a, on an episode where like I'm struggling to get the designs to look how I want them to look versus letting it just flow out of my body. Yeah. Freddie from the show, I feel like that's the big, biggest difference between him and I is that I, I have to dial everything in. Whereas Freddie just, and I, and I struggle we, on the finale. I was like, yeah. yo, should I, this, this little flower, should I, should do you like it here or, or, or just over here or like gone? Like which, which way? And they were like, it's bro. a fucking it's tiny flower. It was, and I was like, it was legit. Like, sorry, do you want to start here or there? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm so like that with every square inch of my shit. Right. Yeah. Whereas Freddie just like flows. He just lets the artwork flow. And when I was a kid, that's how I was. I, I just let the artwork come out. So it's funny when I'm drawing with my kid, I'm almost teaching him the other way around where it's like, dude, don't stress about it. Don't be obsessed with it being perfect, which is kind of funny now that I'm, I'm breaking it down. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's another reason I don't want an apprentice. I don't want to create the same kind of demon in their head that's in mine. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's funny. You know, uh, you guys brought up something up, you know, earlier about, um, and I thought maybe think of like, uh, people that get into the want to be chefs, right? I don't know if you guys have watched the bear. Oh, or, it's, it's so good. Yeah. Right. It's incredible. Dude the intensity of chefs with their like line cooks and the, bro, if, if anybody spoke to their, like, uh, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> like how those guys talk to like their, their apprentices kind of, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Dude, they'd be crying and you'd be called like you're abusive and all kinds of shit. And they're like, I don't give a fuck, man. You're trying to be in this kitchen and do the best work you want to do. This is what, you, this is how you're going to deal with me. The wild thing about do. that is that, I, I watched that show thinking, all right, cool. This is just drama TV. And then I talked to real people who work in the kitchens and like, no, that's real life. That's how it really is. <laughs> and, <I was> like, <laughs> oh, <shit." laughs> and you're like, yeah, well, like when you see that, like, you know, Gordon Ramsay yelling at people and you're like, damn, bro, he's really good at yelling <laughs> at people. But like, oh no, he's not doing it for TV. He probably does run his, yeah. ran his kitchen like that to, you know, just to get things fucking going yep. and they're getting pushed and getting better. But I feel like we're at a point where, it's crazy how people are just soft, bro. <laughs> soft. Just a little bit of just yeah. something. It's like. Oh, you would be like that? No, I'm, that's not my style. Oh, okay. But, I'm like, I don't is, like that. But I'll tell you this. I get so motivated by that. Yes. Like if my mentor was, when my mentor would like shit on me and like I would draw something and it wasn't good or and he could tell that I was being lazy. He was like, oh, let me see that. He'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> Try again, bro. Oh man, crushed ego pff, down. Yeah. But guess what? You crush that ego down. You fucking have to work hard to build that shit back up. And overall, it makes you stronger. Yeah, I agree. It makes people, you more resilient. People you know? are soft. I, I will hundred percent agree with you with that. Like everybody's so soft these days. But also too, I'm like I'm not like a. Everybody fucking, motivates differently. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I know that I get well motivated. Like if I was working in a kitchen and somebody was yelling at me, I know that I fucking get my ass on it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I wouldn't be like, oh my God, I'm going to cry because somebody told me to fucking work harder and faster, you know? Yeah. Well, also, if you watch that, if you watch that show, it's, uh, you, have you ever seen, have you ever seen the movie Whiplash? Love yeah, that movie. That movie's incredible, dude. It. So, so what it is, what it, the concept of the movie is, is they're uh, in a, a specific school for music. One of the right? best music schools in the country. It, it, yeah, like 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 maybe the best one in the country, yeah. right? And there's this this uh, J.K. Simpkin Simpson. What's his last name? 
The State Farm guy. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the farmer he's, he's incredible. But anyway, so his, the whole idea behind it is that he's trying to find someone to push so fucking hard that they will go to the next level, right? Yeah. And he's and and he's and I'm not saying that chefs are like this, but like he's ra he's raised his standards so high, and he's he's like trying to break this person and see if it they'll it it'll, it will either break them or it will force them to go. No, you know what? Fuck you. Watch this. You know what I mean? And honestly, when I've gotten talked to a certain way, again, I'm not promoting this, but that's how it works in my brain. I go, you know what? It's kind of like Kev said when 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 he was talking about people that he couldn't get, he couldn't get an apprenticeship and he yeah. was like okay just wait on it you know yeah. what I mean like like yeah. you're gonna see me you know what I mean yeah. you're gonna see me again you you're know either what gonna I mean? quit or rise above you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah, yeah, and yeah. like whichever way it goes it's gonna be good because if you quit you shouldn't have been here to begin yeah, exactly. with you know yeah, yeah. so I feel like that's why you know when when it comes down to what we're talking about I was like fuck uh, you can't get into this uh, into this like program because your work's not there fucking work harder you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like if you're you know you go get a job at a tattoo shop and they're like sorry man your portfolio's not there fucking go work harder it's okay to say fucking no and there's so much now that it's like if you tell somebody no they just feel like you just crush their dreams and everything's over it's like no man this is just a journey everybody's journey is going to change and kind of move in a different rate and different pace you know and like you know you may not start working at with the best mentor, you might not start working at a best tattoo shop. It doesn't mean that you can't become one of the best tattooers in the world. Life ain't fucking fair, bro. Everybody doesn't start the race in the same line, you know, but we can all change and grow in different rates, you know? <laughs> Straight up, bro. Straight up. I'm going to start putting a counter. <laughs> on screen with a ding every time you say you know you know, you know what I mean yeah. wait, wait, wait. What, what, what's the counter for I say you know like about a thousand you times know. per episode bro you know you know it's the worst <laughs> you know <sighs> all right so what other hot button topics do you guys have I got one right now we're going straight to it let's talk about fucking copying plagiarism in tattooing. So I listened to the making it podcast. Okay. And, uh, one of the guys on the podcast, David Picciuto, he's more or less a woodworker. Mm -hmm. And he recently put out a video about how to make an end table purely on a laser machine. And the whole video was talking his process about layering thin pieces of wood that you can cut on a laser, stacking up, and then building this table, which is very unconventional. And that was the whole basis of the video is like just a laser machine. So normally he's very design oriented, but being that that wasn't the purpose of this video, he didn't really focus on it. And he just went on Pinterest like, oh, this looks cool. I'm going to just do this. And uh, he, he even said it on the podcast today. He was like, the guy who designed that table called me out on it. He was like, hey man, you just ripped me off so bad. Like I'm a small business. I'm a furniture maker. Like these designs are my livelihood. And you've got however many hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube that you're now monetizing off of my design. And he came on the show and he was like, you know, I shouldn't have done what I did, but he didn't specifically say it, but he did not apologize. Yeah. And he was like, I shouldn't have done what I did, but I'm going to give credit to the guy who did this work originally because not only I, I didn't, I didn't say that it was my design, but yeah. I also didn't give credit where it was. Yeah. And at least in his case, it was pretty much a clear copy yeah. of the design. And he, he said it, he was like, it was such a good design that I thought it was just like a generic thing that you would see anywhere. Didn't even think twice that like this was someone's very thought out design just for his own portfolio and his own business. Yeah. Why do you want to cut this out? Cause it's going to be a long one. Okay. So I got something to say about that. So the guy used a laser cutter to build his table as well. The, the original guy, the original yeah. designer. No, it doesn't sound like it's the same table. Then. Well, the, the design of it is. 
<clears throat> what the design of it is, but like, like let's say that somebody builds uh, something out of it, a wood chair out of toothpicks and it looks like a wood chair, you'd still marvel that it's built out of toothpicks, right? So uh, where, I mean, where this is going to go, if you did a painting and then someone tattooed your painting, would that not be copying it? I, it happens to me oh, all do. the time, dude. Well, something like that. I've, I've had a I lot of battles with this myself. So I've, 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 I've had to let go of this yeah. often. Also in traditional tattooing, let's say, that's the name of the game. I feel like if you're using someone's art, like for me, um, a couple of tattoos I've done, uh, the original artist is Roberto Ferri, uh, but I reached out to him before I even put the stencil on and said, hey, I really want to tattoo this design. And he was okay with it. He was like, yeah, like, go for it. Mm -hmm. And in my captions, I said, this is originally by Roberto Ferri, you know? So I'm like, if you don't do that and someone reached, if he reached out to me and said, hey, friend, like, you use my, my painting for your tattoo and you're posting it. The first thing I'm going to say is I'm sorry, you know? But I think that comes with, it's like a lesson learned. I feel like he probably didn't learn his lesson. He probably was just like mad he got caught. No, I mean, I don't think he got mad because he was sincere about being like, oh man, I shouldn't have done it the way that I did it. But it seemed very intentional not to say the words, I'm sorry of what I did. Mm. All right. I, I guess I understand, I, especially being a mom and pop shop and he's designed it and whatever. My, my whole thing is like, I, I, get, I have a very, very skewed version of this because I've gotten ripped off so much. And I'm not even talking about my designs. I'm talking about like, I will design the leaves in a very specific way that I've never seen before. And I've even, I've done this. I've said, yo, Lucas, this is the very first time I've ever done this leaf. I just, I just uh, created this, you know, just fucking around last night, creating leaves. I've never seen the, this leaves done the, this way before. And I'll bet you people start doing leaves this way. Sure as fuck. People start doing leaves that way. Right. So I've had to battle this with my own work often. Right. And it does suck. But like at the end of the day, I don't know, man. It's, it's, this is anyway, I'm going to let John finish what he yeah, wants yeah. to say. And Sorry, then I'm going to bounce off It's all of good. That. It's all good. It's all good. So the reason I'm bringing this up guys is because I'm going to go ahead and say it for my, one of my final pieces on Ink Master, when I went to you know? the drawing board, I went to a bunch of references. I gathered a bunch of references that of, of snakes that I really like. I was like, man, I'm going to draw something based on these. You know, these are things that inspire me. And that's usually how I approach any tattoo design that I'm going to do. I'm going to gather a list of either photos, art, whatever, and I'm going to draw based on that. So for my final snake design, I found... This one snake that I liked, kind of how some of it was flowing. And then I came up with my concept, right? My concept was like, oh, I'm going to do this snake going up a branch up to a peach, right? So the way that the snake was going to go and kind of drape around it, et cetera, I had to draw. But I did reference a painting of a really well-known tattooer. So the other day I woke up to my Instagram, right? I go look at it. And I see that this tattooer saw it, you know, he tagged me on it and he was upset about it. I immediately sent him a message, you know, and I said, hey, dude, you know, I'm really sorry. By the way, the name of this artist is William Yonayama. He's from Australia. He's an amazing tattooer. You should guys should go look at his work. It's beautiful. So he's been tattooing for a long time. And uh, I bought one of his books and uh, when I was in Australia back in like 2014, 2015, and uh, studied his work, you know, inspired me a lot. I think like I have, I have so many tattoo books and out of all of them, you know, you might find a little smidge of something that, you know, sticks with you and you will, you know, take it and make it your own. Anyways, I messaged him. I was like, hey man, I'm really sorry. I absolutely used your painting as part of my references to draw my design. I didn't trace it. I didn't trace your design, but yes, I looked at it. It's a snake. I was very apologetic. I was like, dude, I'm really sorry. Like, you know, one of the worst feelings is to have somebody that you look up to or inspires you 
you know, kind of like be mad at you, be mad at you, man. Like, you know, like that sucked. That really sucked. And if you're a tattooer and you've ever done that and you've experienced that, pff, that fucking sucks, you know? And it sucks for me to have to like admit that that happened to me, especially in such a, like a public way and sharing it with you guys. Because like overall, like when this all came about, I was like, I have to talk to everybody about this because fuck man, like this is my career and I love it and I love tattooing and I'm not going to hide behind it. I, you know, if I make a mistake, I'm going to atone to it and I'm going to speak about it freely. And, uh, I think people should know, you know, I'm not going to just fucking ignore it. So I was, I, I was very apologetic to him and I told him I meant no ill will by it. And he was like, I understand man, you know, but since it's in such a public kind of forum of like ink master, I would appreciate if you like spoke about it. And I was like, dude, I was thinking about speaking about it no matter what. I'm not going to just let this stone go on turn and just like pretend like block them or whatever, you know? And I told him one, you know, I'm going to take this tattoo down, you know, because if, if he had no problem with it, it would be a different story, but because he didn't appreciate it, I'm going to take that down. And two, like, it makes me more of like under, I explained to him that under the circumstances that I was in, I didn't have that much time to sit on the design and I had to like work really fast to make something. It's neither a cop out or, or, a, or I don't know, or an excuse for, for how it played out. But overall, it's like, you know, I drew something based on what you created. And I think like Matt said this before that, you know, if it, if it's still like too close to what you referenced, you know, then you should try to probably try to redraw it more. But like, uh, I think there's a big difference between directly tracing a tattoo design, you know what I'm saying, to then like drawing based off of it because I see this happen all the time. 100%. You know? that, that is art. I, I thought of like immediately of like the painting that's hanging in, in here of like the uh, Rock of Ages. Like it's a famous painting. It's been done and redone. It's a very clear motif, but this isn't that. This is something that he painted, it wasn't a tattoo, it was a painting. And I kind of used it for my reference and I redrew it in my own way. Kevin has heard this story before. I'm going to make it a very, very quick story because I get emotional when I talk about it. So I'm not gonna give you the full version. When I was a younger tattooer, I got called out for ripping off Derek Noble. It wasn't even the same design. It was just in his style, right? Yeah. Destroyed me. But it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because I switch, I turned a switch and was like, you know what? No, I, I was like, okay, cool. That sucked. Never want to feel that again, but this is going to light a fire under me, right? Yeah. Now, fast forward. This was, this was again, this was just the style, right? And it, 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 it destroyed me. Then fast forward uh, up to maybe two or three years ago, Justin Hartman, I don't know if you guys are all familiar with that. It's one of my best friends and one of the dudes that I work with at the Grand Reaper. Mm -hmm. He goes, dude, I think you're the number one ripped off tattooer right now. He said that to me. Yeah. And that's coming from Justin. Yeah. Who gets ripped off all, gets the, ripped off yeah. all the time. He said, yeah. he said, dude, I see so many more rips of your stuff than anyone else's shit. And he's like, like, doesn't that suck? And I was like, I, I and, and whether that's true or not, that's not for me to determine. But it's, it's just the way that it is. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm inspiring people. I was inspired by people. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. like, and I'm not saying that it's okay to trace someone's work. And it's also like Kev said, get, if you get the respect and you get the nod, then like, if you give the respect and you get the nod, then, then all good. Right. But what I'm saying is things change. And, and, and I think the biggest thing for me, and again, I'm not saying that this dude, uh, cause his work is super fire Yeah, and not even if it wasn't, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not disrespecting him in the way that I'm saying like, dude, uh, just don't let it ruin your day. What's your problem? But like, for me, <laughs> it, it's, it happens quite often. And I'm like, I can't let that ruin my vibe, dude. You know what I'm saying? So I do have a weird perspective, I think on this issue because it is a hot button topic and it yeah. is pretty polarizing. You know what I mean? It's a roller coaster though. Cause I remember the first one or two times that I got ripped off. I was like flattered by it. Like everyone always says, oh, you know, imitation is flattery, right? And then after it happened more often, that's when I started to get really annoyed by it. But then it started to happen so often that I'm like, whatever, man, just fuck it. So I think it goes in those kinds of waves. Right, right, So right. I don't know 
how long, how many times this guy's been ripped off. He's, he might be somewhere in that cycle or just, he's really aggravated by it. I mean, I think it also it, was on TV. I feel yeah, like maybe yeah, I think like it's also on TV. Like, I think yeah. that, you know, it being on TV, you know, like probably makes you feel a different way. And I, and I think also adding to the fact, like, let's say he fucking hates Ink Master to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to rub him even more the wrong way. Like, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know more than that. But, you know, overall, like William, like, I'm really sorry. I apologize for, you know, uh, making you feel that, you know, I ripped off your work because that's not at all, I, you know, the way that it was. And I want you to know that, you know, you, you've inspired me, you know, as a tattooer, you know, and I, and I look up to your work and like, it really bummed me out that that's the way it went down. So I wanted to give him that. But overall, I think like, you know, when, uh, you know, when, when you're inspired by people and like, if like what Bobby's saying, you know, like, you know, you're out here like inspiring a bunch of people to like copy your style, right? And I think that's something that like I've seen in tattooing already multiple times where like uh, something is a specific tattooer style and then so many people do it that it becomes a style. Yeah. Right. You know, like you, you can no longer trace the source. Like, it's you like know? fashion. It's like if, if you do something hot, it's like, let's say a Balenciaga will start with something super hot and then you'll see it in Zara and then you'll see it in fucking Target. Like you can't do anything about it. It's like, that's, that's the name of the game. If you're good, you're good. And that's, that comes with the territory. You know what I mean? If, if you see, if people see something they want to try out or imitate is like friend, like take off your Instagram then. Cause you have to know that that's going to happen. If you post yeah, it. Yeah, Exactly. I actually, I, I said this full disclosure, John and I discussed this over the phone the other day. Yeah. Uh, and I said that to him. I was like, I was like, that's, that's kind of really what it comes down to. I don't know that I have room to be upset with it because I put it out there in the world. That was on me. You know what I mean? That yeah. was on me. And, and I get, I guess I should have the right to share my, uh, my work and whatever, but like, it doesn't mean that it's going to be protected in my exact roles of how I want my artwork to be protected. Yeah. Right. Because I'm putting it on a platform that makes it vulnerable. And, and just like Kev said, it's, it's, it's always pushing new boundaries. And I think, okay, so if, if there's, if there's a, for me, if there's a, a positive that I take from uh, people getting inspired from me, it makes me want to change my shit and get better. It's, right. it's, it, I almost, I weaponize it. I make it a tool for me to want to get better and move in a different way. Like it's, it's, I know that sounds crazy and maybe I'm just being an optimi optimist, but that's kind of how I see it sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, and it does, it does get exhausting to kind of trying to duck and weave. Yeah. It's kind of trying to like run away from an alligator in a zigzag pattern. But like it, that's, yeah. that, it's, it's, you know, that's like friend with the NYC. I'm like, you're only doing a hundred of these, but at the same time you have to know it's so dope where someone's going to want to recreate it, do it themselves or whatever. And at that point, it's just like, all right, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to make a new one, a new version of it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, people will understand where the source comes from. If you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I don't want the bullshit version. I want the real version, you yeah. know? So I feel like it works both ways. It just depends on how you approach it. You know what I'm saying? You can be pissed off, but what is that going to do? I think getting called out on it, though, is probably one of the better things. Like you said, like you got called out and it just made you want to change. Similar thing happened to me. We were working here with Dave Tevenall and we would have uh, art nights and I was heavily inspired by him even before I started working with Dave. And now that I'm drawing with him at night, I'm watching him tattoo. Like he just inspired me even more. And my drawing started to look more like his, just like everybody else who was really inspired by Dave. And he stopped working with us. And like months later, he called me up. He's like, bro, why are people tagging me saying, yo, who's this Matt Triano guy? He looks like he's the next Dave Tevenall. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, man, but you, you inspired me. And he got really upset with it. And he called me out on a couple of tattoos really? that I did not trace his, but they, they looked like the Dave Tevin all rose that he used to do all the time. Yeah. And that moment I was like, fuck man, like that just clicked in me. I was like, I gotta, I gotta change my shit. I gotta make myself a name that other people are going to want to try to rip off as opposed to trying to copy somebody else's style. Yeah. So I think getting called out on it though, is like, it's huge. It yeah. kind of flips something in your brain. Like yeah, yeah. it moves you forward. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, one hundred percent. Hey, Brian, how do you feel about it? <laughs> I know. I see you're really pensive over there, so I feel like you have a, you're you're analyzing the situation a lot. I just feel like I instantly ask myself, well, what did you do the first two years as a walk-in tattooer at a walk-in shop? You did the flash off the wall exactly yeah. as is, and if you couldn't do it exactly as is, you weren't being a good tattooer. Shout out to Boog. The, the, the mission, the mission, I know, right? The mission was to do exactly what you see. And if you don't have the, cap, the, the capacity to just do what you see and not throw your flair on it, you missed your mark. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like, I feel like giving credit where credit is due is really nice. You know, it, I'm sure it's nice, but I mean, is everyone writing Sailor Jerry a letter every time they take a rose? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, for yeah. sure. Also, also going back to that point, I don't know about you guys, but I got I got Cherry Creek years in, under my belt. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Cherry Creek, and I'm not flexing. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying that's what you did. Yeah. yeah, Cherry Creek is like 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 bug and like oh, okay. just flash, like right, like that's what you did. And really, I just tried to anyone who would walk in. We I the first shop I, I worked at after I lied to get in was. I don't know if very many people have been into shops with as much flash. I'm talking flash racks. Yeah, man. And this shop was <laughs> fucking big and long. And it was too high on the one, the longest wall. And it was three high on the other small wall. So three rows of flashes of rack all the way down. They had That's a sack. Sick. Fuck at least thousands, if not maybe I'm, and I, I don't want to sound crazy here, but maybe a million things to choose from. And a lot of people wanted it exactly like that. Now I did try to talk them into making it like customize it or whatever. But my goal when I was working at that shop was I want to make everything that walks out of the shop as dope as I possibly can. Right. But the job was fucking, was copying tattoos. That was literally the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's such a, it's like you said, it, it you know, it go, you, 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 it's a roller coaster, this conversation. And the way I even feel about it is <laughs> yeah. a roller coaster. Yeah, so I'm yeah, like, yeah. how could I, I don't even know how to feel about it because I've done it. I've been called out. I've called out other people. I don't know if I've ever called out anyone to oh, I them, have. I have to them, but, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the only maybe uh, facet of this that I haven't uh, done, but. You know why though? You know why I call people out it. is because I know how good it felt afterwards. Like it, it gets, it's really shitty to be called out in the moment, but knowing what it does for your career, I think it's so worth it. It needs to be super done. healthy. So I, you're doing, for me, it was as well. For me, it was. So you're doing it from a place where you're like, I want to pump this artist up. I want them to grow. Really? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, they might not receive it that way, but yeah. that's my intention. That's least. nice. I feel like there is no, this isn't a black and white answer. It's going to be case by case. Yeah. And some people honestly just don't care. There's like, Sick, whatever. It's been happening for fucking 15 years. What's new? I got shit to do, you know, but sometimes it hurts your feelings too. Yeah. It's case I mean, by like, case, I feel like. I mean, I think about like, man, I think about Philip Lou for me. You know what I'm saying? Philip Lou took Japanese tattooing and gave it a certain amount of flair that other people have implemented and been inspired by for so long. I think about like in the world of neo-traditional, I think of like Lars Uv. You know what I'm saying? Like so I, many. I, I feel like he would hate that you called it neo-traditional. And by the way, I hate that my shit is called neo-traditional. <laughs> I mean, most people do, but I mean, like, it's the most like, you know, that's what I don't most people under neo-romanticism. What, what, what do you call yourself? What do you call uh, it? So, but the, the, here's the tricky thing, bro. I, I hate to interrupt you, bro, but no, I was no, like, no, oh, for sure. yeah, I put a dagger in my heart and I don't want to speak for him at all. But I remember when I started doing tattoos similar to the ones that I do now or the yeah. vein of, I talk about this all the time. It was Lars. It was uh, a, a mixed bag, but it was like Lars, Kurt Bayer, uh, Uncle Allen, yeah, uh, Derek Uncle Noble. Allen, these were all Echo. These were all the, the inspirations, right? But it wasn't really a style, right? So then I started doing it in kind of my own way. And neo-traditional, the style already existed. And it was... It was fucking black or orange or purple roses that were slightly askew from traditional. And they had really long spiky thorns or it was like a lady head with like 
just a little turn. It was traditional, but it was slightly askew from traditional. That was neo-traditional when I first started tattooing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the reason that calling my stuff or Lars stuff or anyone else's stuff neo-traditional in that bag isn't necessarily that it's not the same as what it once was. It's fine that a style gets recreated. Correct. What it is, is, and then on the show, right, people will be like, he just did his style. Okay, first of all, these aren't the same style. You're just throwing anything that isn't black and gray realism, black, black and gray, black and, black and gray realism, traditional Japanese and new school. Anything that doesn't fit in these five categories is neo-traditional. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah, how, yeah, yeah, how yeah, is yeah, that yeah, neo-traditional, sure. dude? I mean, you need to agree with you. Need to I, like, term, then, I'm just using it as a term because it's the one that is more widely used. You know what I'm saying? Like, for people to just be able to understand what I'm trying to convey. Right, 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 you know? right, right, right. You but, need to coin a term, friend. Because you know, because literally. Like, they're, they're I like the, the term that I like the, the most is, I don't love it, but it's like, it's neo-romantic. And at least it gives it mm. its own corner yeah. because neo-traditional, that, that's the thing about this, the tattoos that I did on the show, right? They aren't the way that I would approach that tattoo. They, it, it's almost like they were like, do, a, do a, a landscape. And I was like, okay, I'll do it exactly how I would do it at home. First of all, dude, I wouldn't do one. Secondly, this isn't how I would approach this if I were to do it in my style. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? But like, oh, because it had color, it had a border and he used the similar colors. It's 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 neo-traditional. He just did the same style. It's like, no, or the bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, bear's yeah. neo-traditional, dude. So neo-romantic. That's what I mean, what the, the bear is not either of those things. It's just the way that I approached realism. Sorry that it looks like my style. I don't know if you noticed, but I did you it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, like Fuck it's yeah, just, bro. it's just neo-traditional. Cause like, they don't know what else to fucking call it. Cause let's be real. A lot of these people that are watching these shows are uneducated on tattoos. A lot of the people that comment on my shit, especially at a, from a negative tone. So, okay. Somebody else that, that was on the show, I was like, man, I'm so bummed because all these people are like, you're like, oh, you like, you shouldn't have won whatever, whatever. And, and have your opinion. But like, they were like, dude, what, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I, what, what do you mean? I'm just bummed. And they're like, they're like the next person that comments a negative thing on your, on your Instagram, click on their, click on their page. I guarantee they don't have any tattoos and sure as fuck. I Every started time. noticing a pattern. They had very few, no, none to very few tattoos or bad tattoos. And I was like, damn, I didn't, I didn't <sighs> even think about it. And then like, it's like you said, he's like, I would call him and be like, bro, this is this. He's like, why are you getting upset with someone that's commenting on your photo mm -hmm. that is about to go sit down for dinner, dude? Who cares? Yeah. Right. Just but, firing uh, off some random. Just comment. trolling. Right, oh, right, right, right. Gotta go. Anyway, anyway. So, so, so back to the neo-traditional category. I, was, I hate to go on this crazy offshoot, but like that, that really, really, really upset. I even said they didn't air this mm -hmm. and, and they were like, uh, so many people were upset that I got the very first spot in the finale. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't hit the chat. Like I didn't hit the, it, it, my, my, and I'm not disagreeing here. I'm not saying that the, the bear didn't look realistic and the landscape didn't look real color realistic. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not arguing that they didn't look realistic. And I said this in our critiques because they were talking about who should get a spot. I said the same thing I just said earlier. I, I and, and they don't show this on TV. Right. Yeah. Because the judges did say that about my tattoos, they did. We were there. They're so yeah. Right? I, I told they that to someone. Did. I was and, like, things are way longer than they seem. Man. Yes, and they said that about they 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 squeaked by and said that about your lady, and then they said that Freddy's Dragon didn't hit you know or uh, Japanese. Uh, or almost almost none of our tattoos looked the style that they were supposed to, but they didn't show that part. Right. Mm -hmm. My argument was, I know that these don't look like it to you, but this is me trying these styles and that's why they were like I, we choose these because they're the most to them I, to them i didn't vote by the way hey guys i didn't vote so i don't know why you're mad at me about over who won that's why they were just like voted mine because they were the most pleasing to them but what i'm but what i'm getting at is as i talk myself in circles and dig myself out of the hole that i just put myself <laughs> in uh back to just the neo-traditional thing. It, it really, really bothers me that every, it's like a catch-all. Yeah. Neo-traditional is like a fucking catch-all, dude. Yeah, kinda and is. that's why I don't want to be classified as neo-traditional because I'm like, okay, so 
if it, uh, let's just take Justin and I's work, Justin Hartman and I's work. Mm -hmm. How can those two things both be neo traditional? I don't understand it. They don't even look remotely alike in a way that like he that I just think they're so different. In my eyes, they're so different. Or even your work to mine, it just looks so incredibly different to me. I don't know, man. I uh, like uh, overall. I think when uh, when working on your designs, you know, like inspiration is good to take, you know. And I think you're gonna find people that inspire you. Just make sure you're not pissing people off out there, you know, because it's a bummer. That's a bummer. And uh, overall, that was the only sour part of that situation. But like back to what you were saying with like the their their explanation, like I like that tattoo. I don't think that it's it looks exactly the same as what he created, you know, but you know, overall I have respect for the person. If I didn't have a respect for him, I'd be like, whatever, bro. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you I could do, see that it was, it was inspired by it. Yeah. You can see that it's inspired by it. But when, when you see them, you know, like it's, it's, that's what I said to you. I think like, it's very different than some, I've seen some tattoos that have gotten copied, you know, from yours. And I'm like, oh wow. They just took your tattoo and let us said print. Yeah. <laughs> they put it through ghost line. <laughs> it's like, uh, make me a line work out of this and just went poof, did it. But like, that's not what I did. I just drew it. I gave it my own kind of like take and it looks inspired by it, but it doesn't look the same, you know, like it's, it's unless you're like, you know, trying to copy directly, you know, like, like we're doing like a, what you're talking about, maybe like a, an art, like, uh, like replicating someone's art directly, mm -hmm. you know, as a tattoo, mm -hmm. you know, like then it's, you know, you want to give credit to that artist, you know, but, I didn't think I'd touch that. I think you did the right thing. Thank you. You know, at least I, I hope that, you know, you guys that are watching or listening that you can learn from at least my fuck up or my mistake. Cool. And that's all. Let's wrap it up. Closing thoughts or comments so we can get out of here. Yes. Let's not get too hung up on Instagram comments because people love to be miserable and people are always going to be negative and they're always going to have something bad to say. It's like keep flourishing and doing whatever the fuck you do. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. if you really tell them, uh, tell them right there in the camera, uh, if you really hurt someone's feelings, apologize or whatever. But at the same time, it's just like, people always have something negative saying it's, it'll, it will drive you crazy trying to fight with the world, you know? So just do your best to be positive and keep a positive mental attitude. For sure. Nice. You guys, good time, boys. Good time. What you, what you, you want to say? A little closing, closing comments. Closing, closing, I'm, I'm going to tell you comments. what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take a video. And this is going to be on the podcast. We're on the podcast. We're doing the podcast right now. This is also going to be on my Instagram tonight. Woo! Good time, boys. Yeah. Episode one of the Good Time Boys podcast. <laughs> 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 Brian Black. Closing thoughts. Closing <sighs> comments. Closing comments. No pressure. Be nice, be yourself, get tattooed. Hey. Get tattooed. First of all, Matt. Cool. Um, once again, thank you guys for supporting the show. If you would like to support even further, head over to patreon.com slash honest tattooer and you can become a Patreon supporter. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for sticking with us. This was a long one. It might be broken up apart. So I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that up to Matt. But overall... Thank you guys for listening. I hope you get something out of this. I surely have. And uh, I love having these discussions with my friends and hearing their opinions. And thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Peace. Bye.